I need them to deal with me. Amen. Well, I just came by to encourage you to let you know that Jesus is making his way over to you. Amen. That's that, that's enough to give God thanks for. Amen. That's enough to give God praise for because you know that you're not forgotten. Amen, church. Amen. Look at someone say you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. Mercy. So the Bible then goes on to say further that Jesus now, he now goes by this place. He he goes to the well. He goes uh, into the place where a whole bunch of ladies would hang out. And, and he just begins to just hang out there. Amen. And he waits for this woman. And when the woman comes by the well now, amen, she's there doing her, her normal duties. She's getting her water and so forth. Amen. And this is the thing about God. He's so amazing. Amen. That, that, that he's not in intimidated by what's going on in your life at that moment. Amen. He will just simply just come and just relax himself. Amen. In your life at a specific time, specific moment. Amen. And just, just because he wants to. Amen. It's no goodness of your own. Amen. To get God into your life. Lord, I feel like preaching in this house. You see, it's no, you can't do enough things to get God to want to come over to you. Wow. You see, you think it's because your dress looks good, because you're wearing this and you're wearing that. That's the reason why God comes over to you. Amen. No, sir, no, ma'am. That's not the reason why God loves you. God don't care who your mother is. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God doesn't care who your father is. He doesn't care what kind of situation you're in right now. He's not intimidated by what you did last night. Our God is an amazing God. Oh, I wish somebody understood the, the God that you're serving when you lift your hands and praise Him. So the Bible goes on to say now, amen, that Jesus now waited patiently. Uh, amen. Travis Green has that beautiful song, talks about he waited patiently for you and I. Amen. When I was in my foolishness, when I was uh, at the clubhouse uh, with my drink in my hand and I was trying to see which girl I could get for the rest of the night and trying to have a competition to see how many girls' numbers we could get, Jesus was waiting for me. Uh, Amen. That's why I have to give him some praise, church. Because when I put my foot down on a certain pathway and I wanted to do some certain things, for some reason, my foot kept pulling me back. Something kept holding me back when I wanted to go to her house and mess up my ministry. Pulling me back. Oh, I wish I had some church. Somebody in here, to lift your hands and say, God, thank you. Hallelujah. So the Bible goes further on to say, church, that Jesus now was at the well and he was waiting for this woman. And you see, the beauty of it, church, is that the woman didn't even know that her, she was going to meet destiny that morning. She didn't, she couldn't even imagine it that on this day, at this time, she was going to meet the Messiah, Holy Spirit. Uh huh. So she's doing her own thing, you know, and you know, she's drawing water from the well and she sees this man, uh, amen, and she thinks it's just an ordinary man because remember, by this point, uh, she's on her fifth man. Y'all yeah. remember the story, oh, right? Yeah. So the Bible goes on to say now that uh, Jesus says to her, Woman, give me to drink. Give me some water. I need something to drink. I'm thirsty. Can you give me something? Amen. And now it's funny. It's funny. It's funny because you see, oh, hell, 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 watch this. She was has been with enough men, amen, to understand and to discern the kind of man that she was talking to. Yes. You see, you see, you see, when you have been through some things. Hello. When you have been to hell and back, right. amen, you, you, you can tell some yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do I have any witnesses yeah. here? You see, you see, some people who don't have a story, yeah. no offense to them, and God bless them, you know, they, they, they have their, their testimony to say God kept me and so forth. But for some of us who have been lied on, Yes. Some of us who have been cheated on. Anybody yes. been cheated on? Yes. Amen. Anybody ever have been heartbroken before in the house? Come on, y'all. Amen. You, you, you can, you, you know when, when some clowns come around. Come on now. Yes. Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? And, and you can tell when you, you 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 met somebody who has a genuine motive. You, you can differentiate between who's a clown and who's real right, when you've right. been through some things. Yes. Yes. 
So, so this woman now responds to this man and says, how are you going to ask me for water knowing that you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman? She was discerning in that moment. She recognized that this was not an ordinary man that she's been with. Lord have mercy, now. Lord have mercy. And she now begins to now quote, and she says, well, you know, um, yeah, you know, I'm a worshiper. I go to church, you know, you know, I, and, and I, I praise God too, you know. And, and Jesus responds to her and says, woman, you don't know who you worship. You don't know. Come on now. You don't, you don't even know who God really truly is because, amen, our, our, our salvation is of the Jews. And, and like I opened up my starting to say that this is a very interesting passage because uh, Jesus, who was the salvation, was telling her that salvation is of the Jews while he's talking to her about to give her salvation. I'm going to try and break it down. I'm going to try and break it down, but I've got too much time. Now, now watch this. Jesus now then goes on to say to her, he says that, okay, well, who is it you worship? And, 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 and what is it? What's, what's going to happen? And, and she says, well, we know that the Messiah is going to come one day. Well, how does this Samaritan woman who has never been into a Jewish synagogue, never been at a place to bow down before Jehovah God, how does she get to a place to say, well, the Messiah is going to come mm -hmm. and when he comes he will now begin to show us all things and so now Jesus responds to her now watch this I'm going to show you a revelation that the Lord showed me in this same passage are y'all ready for it yes are you ready for it yes. now watch this never before has Jesus ever told anybody who he really was mm. not even the disciples knew who Jesus actually really was. Jesus asked the disciples and said, who do men say that I am? All right, I'm going to preach this thing now. You see, he asked the disciples based upon their perspective of who they seen Jesus to be. So he says, who do men say that I am? And based upon their response, he can tell, and also they can tell, where they are as it relates to their relationship with God. That's a lot of verbiage. I'm going to say it again in layman's terms. So based upon, if God says to you, who am I to you? And you respond to him and say, well, you are the son of God. Based upon their response, God can tell and they can tell how they view God and the relationship that they have with God. So, for some people, they seem Jesus to be, isn't that Joseph's son, the carpenter, the carpenter's son? Some, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are the prophet Isaiah incarnate. But then, but then this, this brash young man, who 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 who, appear, who who doesn't have any restraint all the time, amen. He's easily to, you know, react and so forth, amen. He responds and says, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Messiah that we've been waiting for our whole lives. This man, Peter, could respond from a place, watch this, of passion. Okay? Passion is one of those things that will connect you to God. Okay? If you don't have any passion, all right? That's all right. I got you. I got you. Is it turn on? Passion is one of those things that will make a bridge between you and God. If you don't have any passion, if you don't have any aggression, you will not become connected to God in the time that you need to be connected. If you stay in a place of complacency and being comfortable all the time and never worship God from a place of genuinity in your heart, church will always be boring. Jesus. If you are boring in worship, then church will be boring to you. 
So if you stand all the time, amen, while everybody is taking a drink and worshiping God, if you stay on the sidelines all the time and watch people get deliverance, then church will always be boring to you and you'll never get some revelations. But there has to be somebody in the house that can that can be like Peter and, and rise up and say, man, I want to experience God for myself. See, you got to get to a place where people don't have to call you and text you to come to church. You come to church just because you want to come to church. Do I have any witnesses here in the house? You see, you see, you see, you got to get to a place where you worship God from your spirit because you love God. Not because he blessed you with a good money and a good job, but you worship God just because he's God. Do I have any worshipers in the house today? Hallelujah. Come on, church, just say hallelujah real quick. Come on, keep the devil out of your life real quick. Just say hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus, God. Thank you for what you're about to do in my life, God. All right. Let me just finish it off now and take it home. So now we see here Jesus. He's now standing with this woman at the well. And this woman who thinks that she knows God. But she didn't have the revelation yet because it was not revealed to her. So I came by to help you understand some things. I want to show you how to get a revelation. You see church as a preacher and a prophet. It's my responsibility to open your spirit. But also I've got to open up your psychological mind. Because if I can get you to think a particular way. Amen. When it comes to receiving. God, then you'll learn how to clear your mind and move everything out of your focus because whatever you're looking at, that's where your heart is. Oh, can I preach that for a little bit, Jesus? All right, go ahead with it, he said. You see, now if you're looking at your problems, your problems become your idol. If you're looking at a woman, she becomes your idol. If you're looking at a man that becomes your idol if you're looking at your job that becomes your idol if you're looking at your skin your body and how everything's not working out right for you that becomes your idol for whatever your mind is focusing on that becomes your idol but I hear in the spirit the Lord reminding me of when David said in Psalms 27 he said one thing have I desired of the Lord and that one thing will I seek after I don't know about you this morning but I got to get to church I got to get into the presence of God because if I can get into the house of God I can lift my hands and I can release my burdens if I can get into the house of God and I can get a word from the Lord if I can just get into the presence of God I know it's going to be alright come on somebody you need to take a drink this morning you ain't drinking no wine because alcohol can't do it sex can't do it friends can't do it and money sure enough can't do it if I just can touch the hem of his garment, I know that my mind will be healed, my spirit will be healed, my body will be healed. Drink in the spirit, take a drink of the Holy Ghost, open your spirit, and let God fill you. Somebody open up your mouth and give God some glory. Say, God, fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with power. Fill me with your spirit, God. Give me some more love. Give me your presence, God. Because I've got to have you. I've got to 
disease and when you start to see earthquakes in diverse places, watch this part, watch this. He says, know that the end is not yet. It's not yet, but rather it is the starting or the beginning of great sorrows. Within the last three months, the last three months, even let's go back to even 2017, in the last quarter of the year, we have had more shootings than we have had in schools, in schools, than we have had in the last five, ten years. And just two weeks ago, we had a, another shooting in uh, Mississauga. I think it was Saturday morning. Two cars were driving by, shooting each other. They both turned over. The night before, there was a shootout in Hamilton, where I live. Is anybody seeing what I'm saying here? I'm trying to show you that if you don't have an encounter with Jesus Christ, if you don't have the spirit of Jesus Christ living inside of you, the authentic spirit of Jesus Christ, you will not make it to heaven, period. And I wanted to bring it down because I want y'all to hear me, hear me very clearly. Jesus said in this text that this is even the hour where God is saying only true worshipers. Only true worshipers. And you get true worship only. When we talk about true worship, what are we talking about? We're talking about true worship in spirit and in truth, which means you need two things. You need truth, which is revelation. The unveiling of what and who you are worshiping. And number two, you need the spirit, which means you need to be awakened in the light of Christ. You, all of us have a spirit here, but you could have been awakened to do witchcraft. Mm, hello. Jesus. You could have been awakened to live a life of adultery and fornication. So you, your spirit is still there, still alive. So obviously what we're talking about is, we're talking about your spirit must be awakened in the light of Christ. So you must speak as a child of God. You must live as a child of God. If this church is going to survive, this church must be full of authentic worship. When I was younger, I couldn't touch the drums unless I was filled with the Holy Ghost. We couldn't play the music if we didn't have the Holy Ghost. We couldn't be on the choir if we didn't have the Holy Ghost. We couldn't do praise and worship team without the Holy Ghost. So, we need to get back to the place. This young man, in, in his role as an adjutant or an armor bearer, in his role, you don't know how important you are. Not anybody and everybody can do this job. I'm not just talking about from a character standpoint. I'm talking about from a consecration standpoint. You can't serve the bishop if your life is not sacrificed unto God. And it's, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to, to, you know what I'm saying, but I'm saying this because the church must now come up higher. If this is going to be the breakthrough temple, what we're saying is this is the house, this is the portal of deliverance and change. Anybody who walks into this building becomes delivered. That's what we're saying. And the only way for us to get there is everybody in the house has got to jump with the bishop, with the co-pastor, and go into real worship. Jesus said to the woman, he said, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you would ask me for water. So really, what, what, what he was saying, when Jesus says, give me the drink, what he was actually saying, he was actually saying, I am the water. And he was projecting what she needed out of his mouth to bounce back into her spirit. Lord, this is big stuff. This is heavy stuff, but I'm going to say it anyways. What he was saying was what her spirit should have said and was saying to him. God is speaking to some of you in this house. 
Legit. And I could feel it in my spirit. I was in my prayers, and the Lord began to show me a few of you in this house. I didn't even know how many people was going to be here. I, I just knew that God said there is, there's a few people who I got to speak to and give them the word of life for this morning, for their life. You see, some of y'all are going around in circles, and you don't really know exactly what you got to do. You don't know exactly where you're going. Amen. But what you're missing, the missing piece in your life is you need the Holy Ghost. You need the authentic apostolic Holy Ghost. A lot of people are faking it. They're faking it. I, 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 they're faking it. I'm telling you. I, I preach in different denominations and I can tell you. A lot of people say they have the Holy Ghost, but they don't really have the Holy Ghost. They're, That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. That's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of Jesus Christ that lives inside of you and tells you you did wrong. Come on now. The Holy Ghost is, is it, he, he comes and he fills your entire life with a holy mentality. You feel like being holy. You feel like forgiving people. I'm, I'm just telling you what it is. You, don't, you, you, can't, you can't go two, three, four, five days, seven, eight days, two years, two, five years without forgiving somebody who wronged you. That's not the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. I'm just going to tell you. The same way. Watch this. And I'm closing it. I promise you I'll have an hour. The same way how this bottle becomes empty by me drinking the water is the same way that the Spirit of God will leave your life when you do not be refilled on a daily basis. Some of you got the Holy Ghost when you're younger, but right now you're not filled. You're not filled. You don't feel filled. The only way to refill is to lift your hands up in your own personal devotion because sometimes you can't just wait till Sunday morning. God knows. You gotta know how to find God in the stall at work. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. I, I'm being real. Uh, I'm, the other day, first lady, I was, I was, I was at work, and I felt like I said, I need five minutes, and I just went to the bathroom, shut the door, and just, just, just closed my eyes and said, God, right here, right here, I'm giving you praise. I'm giving you worship. I need you to give me some more peace. Because my peace is almost gone. God, fill me up. I'm telling you, I've watched my father and mother pastor a church from seven people to where we are now and so forth. And I'm telling you, the only thing that keeps you going is the Spirit of God. The commitment. You have to make a commitment to God and say, Lord, I'm not here because I like Bishop or I like First Lady. I'm here because A, you brought me here. B, because I need a word from you. So even though the cares of life get you irritated or, you know, totally just wreck your mind, you have enough inside of you that you got last Sunday. What am I saying? I'm saying that the words of God are life. When you read the scriptures, when you hear the preached word, when the prophet speaks to you, that is to carry you through. When the prophet Elijah was underneath the tree and he wanted to give up and die, he says, I'm ready to die. God, take me. The angel came to him twice, gave him food, and said what? Because the journey is great. This is 2018. Some of y'all need to eat up real quick. Eat up. You ought to say, Lord, fill me up, God. Kebo shatala masata. Come on, y'all, just lift your hands real quick, right in this moment. Right on this moment, right in this moment, right in this moment. Say, God, fill me up. Fill me up, God. I want to speak with tongues. I want to speak positively. I want to speak as a 
child of God and not as somebody who's struggling to forgive my wife, to forgive my ex, to forgive this person, to forgive that person. I want to be free from my past. Anybody want to be free from your past? Run to this altar real quick. Say about you, come. Let me lay my hands on you and give you some, some passion. Nobody coming, that's all right. Come on, lift your hands right where you are. Come on, you know that God is trying to speak to you. 